Yeah, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, I am Sriram Bhairavarpu. I am a postdoc in the department of theoretical computer science, uh, IMSE. So I welcome all of you to the workshop. So I am going to talk about propositional logic. So this is the first session of the two sessions that we have planned on this topic. So today we will be covering some basic definitions and some play around with some logic and uh, set the stage for tomorrow's session. Tomorrow's session will be application oriented. So we'll see the definitions today. OK, let, let me get started. Yeah. So there are English sentences are classified into four types. The first type is a declarative sentence. So a sentence, a declarative sentence is a sentence that makes a statement, provides a fact, conveys some information, and things like that. So some of the examples of declarative sentences are, the sun rises in the east. This auditorium can accommodate around 150 people. The next type of sentences are the exclamatory sentences. So these are the sentences that convey some strong emotion. Some of the examples include, this auditorium is huge. We won the game last night. The next type of sentences are imperative sentences. So which are the sentences which expresses a direct command, request, warning, or instruction. For example, complete your homework by tomorrow. The parent may say, go outside and play. Please keep your mobile phones in silent mode. So these are some of the examples of imperative sentences. So the last type of English sentence is an interrogative sentence, which is a sentence that asks a question, like, how are you? Will you be attending the workshop tomorrow? And things like that. OK, now let's get into business. So let me define what is a preposition. A preposition is a declarative sentence that is either true, that is either true or false, but not both. We just saw in the previous slide the definition of a declarative sentence. It is a sentence that makes a statement, provides a fact, or conveys some information. So now we look at some sentences and ask a question, is this a preposition or not? So for a sentence to be called a preposition, it has to satisfy two things. The first thing is that it should be a declarative sentence. The second thing is that it should be either true or false, but not both. So let's take the first sentence, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Is it a declarative sentence? Yes. Very nice. So is it true or false? True. Excellent. So since this is a declarative sentence and it takes only true, so we say that this is a preposition. So let's take the next sentence, 2 plus 3 is equal to 4. Is it a declarative sentence? Yes. yes. Is it true or false? False. Exactly. So it's a declarative sentence, and it is taking only false, and hence it's also a preposition. Let's take the next sentence. Sum of all angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Is it a declarative sentence? Yes. Very nice. So is it true or false? True. It is true. Is it a preposition? Yes. It is a preposition. So x plus 1 is equal to 3. Is it a declarative sentence? Yes. Yes, it is a declarative sentence. Is it true or false? Yes. Excellent. So what are the values for which this sentence is true? So what are the values for which it is false? For anything other than 2. So it can be both true and false. So is it a preposition? No. So this is not a preposition. So the next sentence, take a cup of coffee. Is it a declarative sentence? So what sentence is this? It's an imperative sentence, excellent. So this is not a declarative sentence, so we don't have to bother about whether it is true or false. And this is not going to be a preposition. So we are all watching a movie enough. Is it a declarative sentence? Yes, it is a declarative sentence. Is it a true or false? So are we watching a movie enough? We are not watching a movie now, right? So it is false. So since it is declarative and only true, so only false, it is a preposition. Go out and play. Is it a declarative sentence? It is not a declarative sentence. And hence, we do, we do not need to check for whether it is true or false. It is not a preposition. And the logic that deals with these prepositions is called as propositional logic. We will see in the coming slides more about it. Okay, 
So let me talk about propositional variables. So the variables that are used to represent propositions are called propositional variables, just as letters are used to denote the numerical values. For example, we say x takes the value 5, y is equal to 100, z is equal to 1000. The conventional letters used for the propositional variables are the small letters P, Q, R, S, and etc. So I have uh, made three pro pro uh, propositions. Excuse me. This pointer is not working. Okay. So the first proposition says, I'm going to represent uh, the first proposition with P. It says two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common. The next proposition says, Chennai is the capital of Tamil Nadu. It is represented, it is represented by Q. And R says, root 2 is a rational number. So I can say things like this. Now, let me define what is a truth value of a proposition. As we, the truth value of a proposition can either be true or false. So when is it true and when is it false? The truth value of a proposition is true if it is a truth proposition and the truth value of a proposition is false if it is a false proposition. Okay, let us see, let us find out what are the truth values of the three uh, the propositions that we have seen in the above part of the slide. So what is it for Q? What is the truth value of P? Two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common. It is true, right? Yes. Correct. So the truth value of, yeah, thanks. The truth value of this proposition is true. What about Q? Chennai is the capital of Tamil Nadu. It is, it is true. So the truth value of this proposition is true. What about R? False, right? Root 2 is an irrational number and hence it's a false proposition. It is a proposition, its truth value is false. Okay, now let us see what are compound prepositions. So the, these are the prepositions that are formed by combining two or more prepositions. So let us uh, take these two, sent these two prepositions. Today is Friday, it is raining today. So these are the two types of sentences that we start with. So what, so let us take the first, okay. So let us take the first sentence, today is Friday. What kind of sentences can you make using today is Friday? Yeah, so today is not Friday. We can say today is not Friday using the same thing. Okay, now similarly you can say it is not raining today using the second sentence, right? Okay, so now we want to combine both the sentences and form, sen form some prepositions. So what kind of sentences can you make? Exactly, so today is Friday and it is raining today. Today is raining or it is raining today. Either today is Friday or it is raining today, but not both. If today is Friday, then it is raining today. Today is Friday if and only if it is raining today. So these are some of the propositions that we have formed by combining these two. So there are some, some words that we have used in order to combine both of them. So these are called connectives. So let us see what are the connectives in these sentences. So these are the first, in the first case it is not, second case it is and, the third case it is or, the fourth one is either this or but not both. The fifth proposition if then. In the sixth example we have if and only if connective. Right, so I have listed down all the connectives here. Now, there is a name given to the proposition if a particular type of a connective is used in the proposition. If a proposition contains this, connect, uh, contains this word and, we call this proposition a negation. If the proposition contains the connective, sorry, if the proposition contains the connective not, we call it a negation. If the proposition contains the connective and, we call it a conjunction. If the proposition contains the connective or we call it a disjunction. If it contains either this statement or this statement but not both, we call it an exclusive or preposition. If this statement, then this statement, then we call it as a conditional preposition. 
this statement if and only if this statement this we call it as a biconditional preposition okay so now that we know some of the compound prepositions let's move forward so let us keep this propositional logic aside for a bit and let me ask you a question so the question is for all values of x and y between 1 and 3 compute the value x square plus y square how would you go about solving this problem yes please exactly sure so you can treat it as x and y are integers so what we do is we first figure out what are the values that x can take x can take 1 to 3 what are the values that y can take y can take values 1 to 3 so now we try to form these pairs what if x takes 1 y takes 1 what if x takes 1 y takes 2 what if x takes 1 y takes 3 and so on now what we do we try to form we try to evaluate what is x square plus y square so 1 square plus 1 square and some things like that okay so we try to uh, we compute x square plus y square so let me ask you a similar kind of a question let's say i'm giving you two prepositions p and q and i'm asking you to compute the value of the compound preposition let's say mixture p comma q so there is a compound preposition p comma q mixture p comma q and i'm giving you two prepositions how do you compute uh, how do you compute the preposition mixture p comma q sorry depends uh, yeah exactly it depends on the connective yeah for a yes exactly so first what we do is we do the same thing as before we ask what are the values that p can take p can take true or false because it's a preposition it cannot take anything other than that right it can either take true or false so what are the values q can take q is also a preposition q can take either true or false so now we try to form a table and try to make all possible pairs what are the possible pairs that you can have in this table for p and q yes true 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 false false true and false false so now i want to compute what is this compound preposition mixture p comma q so this this depends on whatever connective that we are using right so let us hold it on for a for a moment okay so this kind of a table is called a truth table okay so now let us see what is a truth assignment the truth assignment of a compound preposition is an assignment of the truth value for each of the simple prepositions so we have constructed let's say we have const we have this truth table so what are the simple prepositions here the simple prepositions are p and q so what is this truth assignment saying the truth assignment of this compound preposition is an assignment of the truth value for each of the simple prepositions so what are the truth assignments here so each row will be a truth assignment so when p is given true q is given true this is a truth assignment Th this is one of the truth assignment this is a third truth assignment and this is the fourth truth assignment right so what are the truth assignments true true so when p is given true q is given true it is a truth assignment when p is given true q is given false it is a truth assignment when p is given false true it is again a truth assignment the last case is both of them are false it is a truth assignment okay now let's come back to our compound prepositions the first one of uh, uh, the first one is a negation so the negation of p is the preposition do not p and it is denoted by that symbol p so some of the examples are football is not my favorite sport I did not go to school today. So let us define what is a preposition, what is a negation. Negation not P is true if P is false and it is false if P is true. So we are def the entire thing is based on the preposition P, right? So we, ha we are given with the preposition P and we are supposed to find out what is negation P. So how do you say what is negation? What is the value of negation P? So it depends on whatever the value of P is, right? 
So what, what if P is true? What happens to negation P? False. false. What if P is false? Exactly. OK. So this is the truth table. And what are the truth assignments? It, we just have only one preposition here, one simple preposition. So there, is only, there are only two rows. And these two rows, each row will be a truth assignment. right? So true is one truth assignment. False is one truth assignment. OK, what is the truth value of this particular preposition? Today is not Friday. Yes, today is Friday. It's saying it, today is not Friday. So it is a false statement. OK, now let's go to the conjunction. Conjunction of uh, P and Q is a preposition P and Q denoted by P and Q. P uh, inverted V, Q. So some of the examples include, I like tea and coffee. The number two is even and prime. So the conjunction P and Q is defined as true if both P and Q are true. And it is false if at least one of them is false. Now let us try to construct the truth table for the conjunction P and Q. So again, since there are only two variables, sorry, two variables P and Q, so there are four assignments that we have seen in the previous slides. So we have true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. For each of them, we try to assign what is the truth value for a particular assignment. Let's take the first truth assignment, true, true. What is its value? True. What is the next one? False. So how about the others? False. They're all false, right? Excellent. So this is a truth table for conjunction. So how about, how about the truth table of this? What is the truth, table, truth uh, value of this statement? Today is Friday and it is raining today. Right. So, so this has two uh, prepositions, right? Today is Friday. What is the truth value of this? What is the truth value of this? False. So what is the truth assignment that we have? True false, right? So now we go to the table and check for the corresponding true false, what is its value? It is going to be false. And hence, we declare that the truth value of this statement is false. Now let's go to distinction. So distinction of P and Q is the preposition P or Q, denoted by P, V, Q. So some of the examples include, I want to eat a chocolate or an ice cream. It is raining today or, sorry, today is Friday or it is raining today. The distinction P or Q, it is true if at least one of it is true. And it is false if both of them are false. So let us try to construct the two tables. As before, we have only two uh, variables, and hence there are only four truth assignments. So what, what, is the, what are the truth values for the corresponding assignments? Exactly. So it is true. One of it is, both of them are true. It is true. One of it is true. So we have true. So both of them are false. So we will have a false. What is the truth assignment for this statement? Today is Friday, or it is raining today? Right. So today is Friday, it is true. So one of it is true. We don't have to bother about the second one. So it is true. OK. So the next statement, the next uh, proposition is an exclusive or uh, statement. So exclusive or of P and Q is the preposition either P or Q, but not both. So some of the examples include students who have taken calculus or computer science can enroll to this course. Either today is Friday, or it is raining today, but not both. So how is it defined? The exclusive or P plus with a circle around it, Q, is defined as in the following, as the following. It is true if exactly one of P and Q is true. And it is false otherwise. Let us construct the truth table for this. So what do you think? What are the truth values of? So the first one will be false. Second one will be true. Third one, true. Fourth, false. Exactly. So what about this? What is the truth value of this statement? Either today is Friday or it is raining today, but not both. So what is the first statement say? What is the first preposition uh, truth value? True. So what is the second preposition truth value? False. So it is true, false. So for this particular a truth assignment, we check what is the corresponding truth value in the table. 
So it is true. So we, we declare that the truth value of this particular proposition is true. Now let us look at conditional proposition. A conditional statement or an implication of P and Q is the preposition if P then Q. It is denoted by P implies Q. So how is this, how is this defined? So the implication is true, sorry, the implication is false if P is true and Q is false. And it is true otherwise. So let us try to construct the truth table for this. So what happens for the first assignment? True, true. It is true because you look at the first, uh, first truth value, it is true. If the first truth value is true, if the second truth value is false, only then it is false. In all the other cases, it is true. So what is that case? What is that row in which we get a false? Exactly. The second row is the one where we get the truth value as false. In all the other cases, we have true. Now let us see some examples. So what is the truth value of this? If today is Friday, then it is raining today. So what is the truth assignment? True false. So we look at the table, we look at the table and say, okay, it is false. Nice. So what is this? If today is Friday, then it is not raining today. Okay, so if today is Friday and it is not raining today, so both of them are true. So you go to the table, true, true. So you pick up this, you say the truth value of this is true. If today is Saturday, then it is raining today. So what is the truth assignment for this? False true. False, false, right? So for false, false, it is true, right? If the sum of the angles is if the sum of the angles in a triangle is 200 degree, then it is not raining today. So what is the truth assignment? False, true. So if it is false, true, then we have a true here. So there is one interesting thing in this implication. So this value is, so it all depends on the truth value of the uh, first preposition. If the first preposition is true, only then you have to look at the truth value of the second preposition. So whatever is the truth value of the second preposition, it is the truth value of the implication. If the first preposition is false, you don't need to check what is the truth value of the second preposition. Okay. Let's go to a biconditional uh, preposition. The biconditional statement of P and Q is the preposition P if and only if Q, denoted by P double arrow Q. So this is defined as, uh, the by implication is true if both P and Q have the same truth values and it is false otherwise. So what about the truth values of this? So both of them are true, so it is a true. So one of them is true, one of them is false, it is false. Both of them are false, it is again true. So how about this? So what is the truth, truth value for this statement? So what is the truth assignment? Is it true false? So you go to the true false and say it is false and you declare that the truth assignment, truth value of this preposition is false. Okay, so now let us talk about what is evaluation. Evaluation is a process of determining the truth values of compound preposition given a truth assignment. So for instance, let us say I am I'm giving you this preposition P and Q or P or sorry Q or R implies P. Suppose let us say I am giving you this preposition and I am also saying the truth assignment for P, Q, R is true, false, true, which means P is assigned the value true, Q is assigned the truth value false, and R is assigned the truth value true. So in such case, what is the truth value of my proposition? So how do you go about solving this? Yes? Exactly. Thank you. So one way to do it to do is 
first we replace each of the variables with whether it is true or false. So what is true? Sorry, what is P? Okay, P is true. We replace it with true. What is Q? Q is false. Q is false. R is true. And P is true. So now we go to the first uh, term, true and false. What is this? It evaluates to? Yes, both of them has to be true for the resultant to be true. So one of it is false, hence the resultant is false. Now we look at this inner expression, inner term, false or true. What is this? So it evaluates to true. Now we try to evaluate true implies true. What is this? So this is again true. Now we landed up in the final term, false or true. It is true. Yeah. So this is the truth value of this proposition given this truth assignment. Okay. So there is something called satisfaction. This is the opposite of evaluation. So what does this ask? It asks what truth values makes the proposition satisfiable. So when I say satisfiable, its truth value should be true. So suppose I give you this truth table. And I ask, what is the satisfi satisfaction of this truth table? Then you have to go through the truth table and check what are the, uh, what are the uh, rows in which this particular proposition is true. This pr particular proposition is satisfied. So there are only two rows which are true, the first and the last. So the corresponding assignments are the satisfying assignments. So for instance, the true true is a satisfying assignment for this particular truth table and false false is a satisfying assignment for this particular truth table. Similarly, you can define the truth uh, satisfying assignments for all the uh, propositions that we have, uh, compound propositions that we have seen till now. Okay, so coming to the last slide. So propositional logic, it plays a very important role in computer science as well as in our daily life. So it helps us make consistent decisions and uh, it enhances our reasoning and thinking abilities in our uh, daily life. So some of the applications uh, include search engines and uh, translating English sentences into logic. Sometimes English sentences can be ambiguous. So we try to remove the ambiguity by converting the English sentences into logical sentences and then try to make some inferences. And then uh, it has some applications uh, in interference and decision making, system specifications. Some, suppose I say, uh, if I, I need this to accomplish this. I need this, I need A to, to, to do P. I need C to do D, some things like that. So it makes easy for us to understand if we uh, encode these things in logic. And there are various artificial intelligence applications, logical puzzles, and logic and circuits. Okay, so that's all for from my side. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. If there are no questions, thank you so much.